Hi everyone, welcome back to episode eight of Enforcer and the Dude. We don't have to buy likes on this show. Apparently everyone likes us. And man, we've got a big show planned for you this time. Uh, we've got our first international celebrity guest right from the US of A, flown all the way here just for this show. Just for, you, just for you guys. Uh, we got latest news, we got TCR, uh, around at Ipswich, uh, MotoGP, uh, we got uh, supercars as well, a few interesting things going on in that department. Grassroots racing, we're doing some sideways action. We're going drifting, so stay tuned for that one. Of course, our fan comments, and uh, we've got the announcements of our winners of our first Castrol giveaway as well. So stay tuned for that. Now let's get into it. I'm good, Russ. Bit going on around the place. Bit of racing. Heaps of racing, mate. Oh, yeah. Got a couple of trophies. Yeah. Yeah, who's that? You were out there as well yeah. with, with young Nash with Nash, the Hyundai. Yeah, having a run He had a great time. Yeah. Had a good. great time. What did you, so what did you think? Of what did you think of the TCR? Uh, the on-track stuff was good. track was all right. I thought the, the pit area looked like a garage sale. Yeah, it was a bit It needed to tidy yeah. up, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. There, was, there was stuff everywhere. A couple of dodgy everywhere. banners printed on the thing and... Like, you know, looked like a second-hand car lot in the pit area. <laughs> but that's what we spoke about in the yeah. last show, was that that's the side of it that has to be has to be detailed. You well, know, is behind, is behind the pits. I don't know, mate, but if you're managing that thing and you drive through the gate and you don't realise that looks like shit, you, no. you've got problems. Yeah, yeah, but on the other side of it, they shouldn't have had cars in there from like but passenger cars. I don't know, mate, there's thing, two so. blokes there in charge of it. They drove yeah. through the same gate I did. If my staff yeah. here tr had that sort of presentation, they'd all be yeah, on the front yeah. gate. Yeah. <laughs> but racing itself, I thought the racing might be a bit better at Ipswich because it yeah, tends to connect to the aero wash. No, nah, track. The, the track was really funky. I don't know whether it was because it ran after the supercars. Yeah. Uh, there was only, it was, it was like a sprint car track. There was only one line. Right. Like you got offline and you just got sent. So I know what you know. it is. It's the Michelin rubber. You reckon that's what it is? Yeah. So even when the Porsche right, lay that Michelin rubber yeah, down, yeah, yeah. the supercars are really quick on it for for a bit of time and if you get offline they're gone so maybe it was a and that was a problem it just limited passing narrow, opportunities because of it but but overall it was i thought the racing was was pretty sharp and uh qualifying was unbelievable i mean a second pretty well covered the whole field and the first five were in one tenth of a second yeah, i thought that was going to shape up to be some some good racing but it like yeah, i was, it was excited because i was following you you know yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had someone i knew in the, i think that was a really really good move mm. by TCR to get someone of your credibility in the car because it's someone you know, you're a household name yeah. and you're running up the front so it gives the thing some good credibility for sure. It's always nice to run up the front as well, get a get a bit of silverware as well on the yeah, way. Yeah they had your in-car so, camera in there and you you could tell that you'd worked out how to drive the thing properly and and uh, it was a lot easier second time round. Yeah. Far easier because I wasn't learning the track. Knew the track. I just had to learn the car. We started messing around with setups a little bit as well. It actually surprised me how um, that you could change something on the car. Yeah. And you could actually feel it. I thought being road car base, they'd be a little bit lazy, but you could actually change it, things. Again, I think that Michelin tyre helps. It's a good, it's a good tyre. Good tyre. And you can keep up it pretty well too. Like you, you can flog the thing pretty hard. Uh, yeah. But overall, it was you know the, the, I, I thought the racing racing was really good. They dipped into the one minute twelves, the high one minute twelves in qualifying. I didn't think they were going to be that fast because that's really race pace, uh, not qualifying pace for a supercar or super two, but it's they dipped into the elevens and twelves in the race there the week before. So that's not a bad effort for something that's less than half the power. Yeah, I reckon they surprised me with the, the speed they had, but the thing that, that I that I enjoyed about it is is, is the, the frog showed up well, yeah. before he got thrown out of the joint, <laughs> which is another story. <laughs> he was sick or something, wasn't he? <laughs> uh, but he took it to, yeah. to another level yeah. and everyone yeah. raised. Then you found some time and everyone found some time and then yeah. it was like people started pushing those cars to a new limit. So that was interesting to watch. Yeah, I mean, I mean he's won races in, in the world 
to TCR Championship. So he's a, he's a serious peddler. Uh, like, but oh, I definitely learned a bit off. But of he him. won the race by what eight seconds on. Yeah, yeah. He, so was, he was on the gas. I'm like. going to go. Did did he go out in the piss on Saturday night? And did he get? Did he get? Did he go over? I don't know. I was I was told that he just had. A bad burger, or I, 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 was I don't. Was the frog on the, the grog? Was the frog? I, I, don't, I don't know. The, the I haven't seen anything official. Uh, nothing official has come through from Cam's either. The, the but report, why, the report. So they were asked a question by Speed Cafe, and they published a story. Yeah. And it was, we won't confirm or deny it. Yeah. So what does that tell you? Oh, I, like I said, I know as much as what you do. So I reckon it's pretty pretty bad. Pretty, either he did it or he didn't. They need to they need to come out and clear that up. They, they probably, if it was any other sport, you'd probably get named and shamed pretty quickly, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. So I got I got um, I got breathalysed in the morning. Uh, yeah, Nash got breathalysed and he's sixteen. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. But, if, if, but but if he was if he was drunk yeah. and and blew numbers, they should just say. What what sort of message does that send to the young people and that in our sport? So they can't just say nothing. That's true. <laughs> That's true, but yeah. I, I don't know why they haven't said anything about it, and anything is a come. Obviously, yeah. it doesn't uh, it doesn't hold the same weight as like drugs in sport and that sort of thing, um, for whatever reason. I don't know why, but it must come under a different different ruling. Well, it's, yeah, I don't know, but they're the gov sports governing body. They need to clear it up. Uh, now the ARG group. Yep. That. Uh, that obviously running TCR, the group themselves, they've been out on a bit of a spending spree. TCM. Yeah, they've been in acquisition mode. Masters. Yeah. Uh, is that a done deal? Or what, oh, what's, it, what's it read? Because you've spoken to some of their competitors. Yeah, apparently it's, it's a done deal. It's and a done it was, deal. It's going to stay within the existing management structure for now. So. Okay. So Touring Car Masters, will they run exclusively with TCR or will they still run with supercars or will it be a mixture of both? I think, oh, is, I is that what they, the calendar, I think, is a bit of a sticking point? Because some, yeah. some of the competitors, I believe, still want to run with... It's a, I reckon they bought it as a bargaining chip. Yep. You know, they've... They're going to use that as a lever to try and get on the supercars bill or do something, but it's be interesting to see how it plays out. We spoke about it in the last show that everything around TCR had to get better. Yeah. So that's obviously why they're doing this. They're going out and, and getting other categories to make the whole show better because, like we said, the product seems to be okay, the product being the cars, but the show is no good. So that's why they're going out <laughs> buying all this. Yeah. It's pretty obvious what they're doing. Good to... TCM's a good a good ad though because it's got a got a pretty good following. Yeah, it's got some name drivers, some cool cars, a bit of V8 action, and TA2. TA2 is in the same bundle. So yeah, um, the guy who had the category management rights, Tony Hunter, owned the category management rights for both those categories, so they've acquired that off him. Uh, is it a done deal? So that's a done deal as well. The TA2. Yep. And that won't be as big a shift because they went, went with the supercars anyway. So well, they've been, been running under double ASA. They haven't been running under CAMS sanctioning. So that'll actually be a good a good thing for them. Um, they'll they'll get to run on CAMS sanctioned events. Because big field, thirty plus cars, huge huge numbers, pretty cool cars to to look at. I actually rate them. I think they're pretty good. Yeah. We've actually been offered that, uh, to bring one in here to test. Yeah, actually. I've driven them a so. couple of times. They're they're, they're pretty good. Like if you hustle them too hard, you run out of brakes and that. So there's a bit of bit of management to, to driving them. And look, I've seen them run in America, big fields of them in America when I was at Detroit. And when you watch them go past, for the average person, you couldn't tell the difference if that was a, a NASCAR or a or a TA2 car. They sound loud and they they honk along and look good. So the crowd should like them. At the end of the day, it should be a bit of a crowd favourite. Yeah, it would be a crowd favourite. But I'd, you've got to get named drivers in it. As I said, like most people turn it on the on the TV on the weekend, probably you knew you and James Moffat, and that'd be it. So yeah, yeah. they need some more star drivers. Bathurst six hour as well. Yeah, um, they had a crack so at that. They, they've so the ARG group, yep. T TCR, taken over Bathurst six hour as well. So like I said, this has just all happened in the last couple of weeks. Man, big spend. Big spend. All well, we don't know the numbers. Of, well, of we the... don't know, but. But they've, but they've acquired that. Um, but what's the, what would be the angle there of, of the six hour, because it's just a single single race? Well, they can turn it into whatever they want, but it's it's production car based event yeah. at the moment. Uh, they're in in partnership with CAMS for a bid on the fifth event at Bathurst, yep. trying to do a TCR type in, enduro event. So yep. maybe it's a, a reserve shoot. If that doesn't go through, they, okay. they've got that in the, to turn into a TCR race. So. You need, if you've got a touring car category in Australia, you need a Bathurst. So 
that's them putting a bathurst in, in well the, the read the read that i'm getting is that it's narrowed down to two for the fifth bathurst yeah event. it is down to two they, down to they can only have five five events at bathurst yeah, it's down to and supercars just, which yep. is their goodwood festival of speed type event and then the tcr enduro type uh, event with cams yep. and and uh, arg okay who do you reckon will get it i reckon cams and arg that's my tip really yep the Goodwood Festival thing would be pretty cool, though. Uh, that Oregon, anyway. Oregon could be could be cool, but it, is it too far out of town? You know, are you going to you need the you need the money? Yeah. Are the other people with the money from Sydney or Melbourne and that going to come to Bathurst for that style event? I, I don't know. It could be risky. So anyone that hasn't seen Goodwood, it's basically a hill climb sort of thing. It's a but festival of speed. It's a celebration speed, yeah. of all things motoring. Um, so static displays, a hill climb hill type climb, of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. My biggest thing about that is, are you going to get the people there? If you turned a TCR race there that had an international flavour to it, so you had the new TCR New Zealand, Europeans coming over it, the Asian series to one hell of a like fifty odd cars there, that'd be a pretty awesome race. If you owned a TCR car. One, one, and you could race it anywhere around the world, you'd want to bring it to Bathurst. So yep. I think they've got something there with that for sure. Will they get people to turn up and watch it? And big crowds? Probably not. But as a competitor, if you get a TCR yeah, car, yeah. you'd want to bring it there. Well, you look at Bathurst 12 hour. I mean, seriously, they started off, look, look where that's taken off. It's to. on every manufacturer's it, it bucket list, isn't it? They're all uh, in there. What would, you, what would you change with, with or, or the direction that TCR are going? Would you do anything personally, differently? change anything I mean what's your if you oh, if you had the controls sporting wise yep. I'd, I'd try and leave a bit more gap between those two races because you're losing too many cars yeah um, it's tight turnaround yeah so obviously there's some good cars but the Subaru and the Opel are obviously shit boxes you know they break yep. down every time they drive them there's no spare parts for them they're, they're orphans yeah I think that there are only two Subarus that, that are in the in the world so you know, you, you can't afford to lose. If you've got 16 cars, you can't lose, lose afford to lose four or five cars between yeah. between if those you had races. 30, it'd be all right, but not not that many. Yeah, but I think it's something to do with the TV. That's the deal they got with SBS yeah, to have it close up. Um, but again, rumours are around the place that they're sourcing a new TV deal. So if that happens and they can space those races out, it's definitely going to be better. Yeah, the rumour is they're in pretty pretty hot talks with Seven. So really, yeah, okay. that's the rumour. You know more than I do, dude. <laughs> hey, look, we've got to get into our special guest because I want to get him in for the rest of the show because he's fairly opinionated. Yeah. Um, I, I sort of classify him. He's like the American version of you. Maybe that's why you get along pretty good with him. <laughs> <laughs> he's one so, more shit so than I have. So we, we, we've got a we've got a little bit of video here. We've got a little two minute video of who our special guest, what he's done, what he's about, and just in case you haven't heard about him, you're about to now. Boris Said has clearly climbed the road racing ladder from local SCCA racer in the late 80s to winner of the really big events, Daytona, Sebring, Nürburgring. As NASCAR's popularity exploded, he helped cup drivers, not least Dale Jr., develop their road racing skills and displayed his own abilities as well, winning a truck series race at Infineon, a nationwide race in Montreal, and scoring two cup series poles. Okay, yeah, <laughs> Boris. He's going to Australia in a while. Everyone, yeah. Boris really said good. the great straight, straight off the straight off the plane. So I, I knew I was coming to a racing place yeah. when I got on the plane, and Jamie Wincup taught me how to buckle my seatbelt. There you go. Yeah, on the video. Yeah, that's pretty that's good. Cool. Cool. They don't do that in America. <laughs> no, that's, that's right. He's doing those Virgin major flights. Yeah, He's done, awesome. yeah. Well, so I wasn't quite sure how to get it in when I was sitting in there, and then I saw that. <laughs> it was easy. Lucky for Jamie Winker. <laughs> <laughs> Saves the day. Yeah. How are you going? Good, good to see you. It's been, been a while, while between drinks. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in town, no racing. Me and my son, we're doing the tourist stuff, you know, petting yeah, crocodiles, yeah. you know. Eating maybe iguana, surfing, <laughs> stuff like that. Well, BMW are out here at, at Norwell. Everyone could probably hear a, a bit of commotion. It's a bit and bit cars. ironic, isn't it? Both, yeah, yeah. Both of us BNX 
factory BMW drivers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Boris what? has now got a pretty successful BMW dealership. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good one. So yeah. when's the last time you were out here? Uh, in the Gold Coast when we were doing that international race. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. What year was that? That was, uh, oh, what's that? Uh, 12, 12? 12? 2012. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, it has been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Good times. Me- it was memorable. It was fun racing. And I remember the first night there we woke up and I get a knock on the door at 6 in the morning. And as a police officer, you know, open the door all jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> Were you awake between four and six o'clock in the morning? I'm like, no. Nope. He goes, okay. I go, why do you ask? He goes, seems your neighbor is falling off the balcony. <laughs> and we were on the 30th floor. <laughs> we go look, and there's a little outline on the 10th floor. Oh, serious? Yeah, serious. It was crazy. Yeah. It sounds like a normal, normal weekend down on the ghost. <laughs> exactly. The like gold coast is wild. <laughs> I, um, what have you been up to? What's, what's, uh, you what's know, I, 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 I've toned the racing way down, pretty yep. much retired. You know, I opened a BMW dealership, car dealership with Rick Hendrick about eight years ago. Okay. So I've been working on that a lot. Yep. We just built a new $25 million facility this year and opened six months ago. Well, you must be selling some cars. Yeah, we're selling some cars. You know, we've yeah. been, you know, BMW has this award called Center of Excellence. Yes. And out of 346 mm-hmm. dealers in the country, 32 win it. And we were the first dealer in history to win it their first year in business. And we've won it every year. So is that your hard work or Rick Hendrick's influence? Who? It's <laughs> no, 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 no. a combination of him. He's a great cool partner. Yeah, he's a cool him. guy. You know, I yeah. mean, I never ever thought. You know, I mean, he's like the guy when you're growing up racing. You know, I mean, he's just the he's man. A, he's the man. He's yeah. the man. And in the car business, he's the man too. Do you he's call got, him Mr. Hendrick or Rick? I call him Rick. Yeah. I can't call him Mr. Hendrick. You know, I think I'm the only one that calls him Rick. But you know, the guy is so down to earth. Just such a cool oh, yeah, guy. Yeah. You know, and just great. Heavy you know. hitter as far as NASCAR goes. He's a heavy hitter in automobile business and a heavy hitter in NASCAR. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Hey, look. So look. In America, you're, you're a motorsport household name, but over here you may not be. So let's go a bit through <laughs> some of your resume right here. Um, you started back in 1987, uh, Sports Car Club. Uh, you're actually Rookie of the Year in uh, 1988. Can yeah. you remember back that far? Yeah. But you've raced NASCAR. You've won the 24 Hours of Daytona, won 12 Hours of Sebring, American Le Mans Series with a win at Laguna Seca. Um, first American to win the 24 hours of Nürburgring yep. in Germany as well. Competed in the X Games. Yep. What was that about? That's uh, left field. I was in Robbie Gordon's one of those off-road trucks that used uh. to do good. <laughs> he asked me and I'm like, the one thing about me, I've never turned down a ride. So yep. he goes, hey, you want to drive in the X Games in a truck? I'm like, why not? Do I get any practice? Sure, you get plenty of practice. And he, he gave me six minutes. And that was it. <laughs> that's but, Robbie being generous. Yeah, that's Robbie. But, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. But, trucks. That's the cool. That's why I compare you actually to Paul. You like the American version of Paul. Just jump in anything, and that's why I always regard as as a good race driver anyone that can jump in anything and be competitive. Yeah. You know, it's all right if you're good in one thing, but if you're good at a lot of it, a lot of things in motorsport, well, that's when you know you're a steerer. Yeah, I came here to try to be a supercar, and that was a little hard to be competitive. <laughs> you guys are pretty good in those you, cars. You haven't been the only one. Yeah. You haven't been the only one. So you've done Bathurst a couple of times. Uh, uh, one time one, Bathurst, yep. Phillip Island, and then we did the Gold Coast twice. Yep. Yeah. So I'll ask you about that, because you're going to be you're going to be in for the rest of the show, yeah, all right. and we're going to be going through a lot of stuff. Um, especially uh, a bit of supercar gear. So we want to get your opinion on it. Yep. And, and we want to talk about NASCAR as well, because supercars here is going through a tough time, a uh, real tough time, both on and off the track. Uh, as NASCAR... There's some parallels is, there, it's for a sure. Parallels, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and having to come up with a new car for 2020, 2021, as NASCAR is. So I want to get all your opinions on that. But one thing I want to get your opinion on, right, I want to take a trip down memory lane. Right. All right. You, you ready? You ready yeah, for this ready. one? Because we. Is video? It, well, yeah. In our last episode, we had heroes and villains yeah. in the sport that we think is lacking. It's lacking. Everyone's good, gone soft. Hard. Everyone's gone soft. You know. <laughs> so we had a whole segment on it, which which went fantastic, and we want to put you a part of that. I, I call <laughs> it politically correct. Everybody's too politically correct. Uh, I, these I, days. Could, I couldn't agree more. So, um, do you remember? Greg, Greg Biffle <laughs> uh, and Watkins Glen. I do so, remember that. <laughs> you, 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 re, you remember this one? Nick Harrison, crew chief for Boris, said, obviously we saw Boris involved in that last accident with uh, David Reagan, <laughs> but you said that may not have been the reason that led to the uh, altercation with Greg week. Biffle. What did yeah, cause yeah. that? It is the altercation with Biffle, um, Boris has had a problem with, um, I, actually I think Biffle's had a problem with Boris from a previous race, so leading into this race, they already had some aggression towards each other. Early in the race, Biffle had ran out of gas and was on multiple laps down and was racing Boris. 
is Boris thought dirty, so Boris relayed a message <laughs> to the spotter that he wanted to meet him after the race. And and the deal with the six car was just hard racing. I think uh, Boris just got into him, and that was a really ugly wreck. And I think that was just uh, hard racing. But uh, Greg Biff on Boris said um, have some problems there, and Boris wanted to handle it with his fist. So that's what was going on. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> That gets better. I never heard that before. Uh -huh. All right, Shannon, yeah, thanks. Uh, good. Uh, Morris yeah. said, good politician. Uh, we caught him earlier for this comment. Uh, walk us through those last couple laps, because clearly it was, a, it was a little chaotic. It was crazy. I mean, the last lap, the six car was getting into me a lot. And I didn't want to wreck him. It just, I, I had to stay on the track, and he didn't give me any room. It just, you know, we both collide. I, that's the only thing I feel bad about. I'm just... I'm more upset with Greg Biffle. He's the most unprofessional little scaredy cat I've ever seen in my life. He wouldn't even fight me like a man after. So if someone texts me his address, I'll go see him Wednesday at his house and show him, show him what he really needs. He needs a, he needs a friggin' whooping. And I'm gonna give it to him. He was flipping me off, giving the finger, totally unprofessional, two laps down. I mean, he's a chump. Well, we saw what happened in, well, walk us through exactly what happened in the garage. So we kind of walked in the middle. I went over there to go talk to him. He wouldn't even let me get out of the car. And he comes over and throws a few little baby punches. And then when I get out, he runs away and hides behind some big guys. But he, he won't hide from me long. I'll, I'll find him. I won't settle it out in the track. It's not right to wreck cars. But he'll show up at a race with a black eye one of these days. I'll see him somewhere. You're <laughs> oh, the heat of the battle. You say some things. <laughs> that's great. That's good. That, that's great. I wish I could have got him. I was going to kick his ass. <laughs> But he did hide behind this guy that was about 300 pounds. I couldn't get through him. He just kept blocking him, blocking him, uh, or else he would have been he would have been in trouble. But that's fantastic. I, yeah. I, you know, look at the end of the day, and like you said, you didn't want to wreck him on the track because you didn't want to wreck a car. Get right. the mechanics here today. Go right. sort it out with him. Right. But that's what's missing nowadays, and that and that's like I said to you last well, episode. Well, still got a bit of that over there. What actually happens over there if you physically assault someone in NASCAR? Do they? Uh, they give you a little fine. I, I think really they like it for the TV. I mean, but you know, what are they, just call you, call you anything the on the track, you know, unlike sports car racing over here, you don't get fined for. It. Right. I mean, you could take him out, he could take me out, and they let us settle it on the track. Yep. Off the track, if you start throwing fists, they're going to fine you. Personally, the Personally, driver. The driver. Yep. And that's it. But it would have been worth it. Yeah. It would have been worth it. But it's still going on. Like, yeah. like I said, when we did that episode, we, there was a couple just recently, uh, uh, Suarez and, and, and in uh, qualifying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like they, they had a massive one. Like she was on big style, but. You're right. It, that's what I like about NASCAR. Boyer on Newman the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. They can see the big points. picture. They can see the, that it makes good TV, and it's they, they realise it's about the show. Right. It's about but, the show. But you know it's an emotional sport. I mean, you're out there, you know, hot, giving it your all. It's physical. And, and when you think someone did you wrong, I mean, you could just sit there and say, yeah, I just want to thank God, and it was a great race, but I'll get him <laughs> next time. I mean, I can't do that. I just, <laughs> so my mind comes out, and when that well, happens, you're That's mad, why you know? got to where you were. I guess, you know, I mean, you know where I'm at. I'm, I never fake it, yeah. right? Like you. Like my wife says, Paul's like your brother over there on the other side of the ocean, you know, 7,000 miles away. Yeah. And, and that's just the way you know, I've exactly always been. Some people like it, some don't, but yeah. you can't change. We're just cool. jump, I mean, jumping ahead, but... It's appropriate that we, that we put it in now. I, right. I reckon that we, we smash supercars up a little bit. Well, I, I do particularly, because I reckon they've been going in the wrong direction for quite a few years and why the category is in a bit of decline at the moment. But I think it's unfair to just target supercars. I think motorsport worldwide is going through a tough time. Yes, NASCAR, NASCAR, yeah. NASCAR yeah. Uh, Formula One. Yep. Uh, probably the only one that's actually doing really well is MotoGP. They're probably the only motorsport that's actually either level or on the increase, you know, yeah. but the racing's so damn good. My, my question to both of you is, do, do you, I've got a theory on it. Number one is cost. I mean, the, the sponsorship isn't there to sponsor some of these categories anymore, NASCAR, F1, supercars. Um, so that's one part of it. But the second part is, are we losing heroes, our, our, our role models and heroes and villains and of the sport? So people are not following it because of that? I that's do, what do you I think. think. It's I, I, in 2000, in 1998, I did my first NASCAR race, and the guys in there, like Dale Earnhardt Sr. and Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin, you had all these guys, gods. you know, you know, they were gods, and they all have their, their, you know, these personalities. And now yeah. the problem is, you're taking all these kids, you know, from video games, right out. They're 20 years old, and they, and and they're so politically correct, they have no personality, so they're boring. So what you have is in NASCAR, I think, is you have this older crowd and all these heroes are gone 
and they just don't relate to these kids. They don't relate to a 23-year-old kid that is boring as vanilla ice cream, yeah. right? Yeah. And so they're not creating the entertainment, I think. I mean, the racing's still good on you the track. You can't fake it either. They can't, you can't fake yeah. it, you know? And so the racing on the track has been good in NASCAR, but the, the characters are boring. I mean, Kyle Busch used to be, you know, he's, he's, he's kind of an ass. You know, he's an arrogant guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He can yeah. drive like the wind. But when he gets interviewed, I want to see what he has to say because yeah, it's going to be too. something outrageous, yeah. right? Yeah, right. And yeah, he's right. entertaining. And I think. Lucky he can drive fast. Right, exactly. Yeah. Lucky he can drive fast. If not, he couldn't get a job at the Home Depot. Yeah. Right? I <laughs> yeah. mean, he's a moron. It's yeah. a bit of a nerdy looking dude, isn't yeah. it? I, I, you're right. I, I don't like him. I, right. I just, as long as I follow NASCAR, I do not like him. But that's good because I've got an opinion about a driver. Whether I like yeah, him or don't right. like him, I've got an opinion. You, like I, I, you yeah. respect the way he drives. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like you said. Yeah. But, but at least I've got an opinion, whereas yeah. some of the other new NASCAR drivers that have come in, that have taken the places of Jeff Gordon and... I don't follow him because I just uh, there's nothing for me that there that attracts me. And the way you say that, you know, you used to look at a NASCAR track, and I always when we took that lap before the race around the track in the back of the truck, and you look in the stands and all the red cotton T-shirts because of Dale Jr. You yeah. know, and you had these love and hate relationships. You know, when you go yeah. to a NASCAR race, you put your colors on and you root for that guy and you hate that guy. Yeah. Yep. And I saw that when I did my first V8 supercar race here. You know, it was more Holden, you know, and Ford, Ford. you know, and it was that, that Tribal. You know, Coke and Pepsi type thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that creates excitement and people watch it, you know, because they want to see Ford lose or they want to see Holden lose. It's right? a good point. And, 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 and something categories have to think about and not just think about one side of it. I know cost is one, but. It's in it. It's an entertainment business, right? You know, and and, and your actors are your your drivers, drivers. or players, and, and and that's it. They're part of it. And my personal opinion is they need to work on. And I don't. I, I just looking at NASCAR now, but maybe over here is to look for this next generation of fan. And right now, all these young kids yeah. are on their computers, or on their phones, or playing video games. We need to get them off the couch and at these events to see the excitement yeah. and yeah, yeah, hear yeah. the sound because. You watch a race on TV, it's one thing. But when you're there and you hear it and you smell it, it's a lot more exciting. Except like, Formula E. Except Formula E. <laughs> 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 and what you said something before that, that made me think about it, like TCR was exciting because you knew him. Right? Yeah. You need to root for somebody. Yeah. You know, or what are you watching? Just a bunch of guys going around the track. It's yeah. interesting because it's across the board and, and it's an unfortunate situation where it's coming right at the time where everyone's thinking about costs and that, that a lot of your name drivers are now retiring or getting out of sports, and Formula One even, there's a, there's a couple left in there, at least you've got the Hamiltons and the Vettels, and, but as oh, Ricardo, he's probably the only one with a decent personality, right. but as for the rest of them, it's like watching paint dry. Like, uh, the, two, just, so, the two young kids that drive for Rick Hendrick now, I can't even remember their names. Right. Uh, you know, I, told oh, Rick, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, name them. One's taken over Jeff Gordon's car, and one's taken over Junior's car. Right. I'd have to Google them to work out who it was. Right. I go, you need to get them to date a porn star or something. You get a little excitement, like, oh, he is? You know, I mean, at least to take notice of him. But, yeah, you, you don't know. William Byron. William Byron, You yeah. know, the, that, that's a kid that, like, you know, if it was, I don't know if you know baseball here, but it's like he played Little League for two years, and now he's playing for the Yankees. You know, and he's 21 years old. It's crazy. And he's a good driver, but, man, is he boring. You know, he's just he hasn't lived. He hasn't lived. Hasn't had yeah, to, not his fault yet. Hasn't really. had it tough yet. It hasn't had it tough yet. <laughs> yeah, but man, he's got talent. Yeah. unbelievable talent. Something that really has to be has to be mindful, isn't it? Like with his motorsport categories, that they got to they got to think about this part of it, not just think of one side. They because gotta think about it. You know? Still, your reason for being is for the fans, and you yeah. need to have entertainment. Yeah, right? exactly it has right. to be entertaining. Cool. Uh, now, going on cost cutting and, and again this is this is great that we got you here because of what NASCAR there's a lot of similarities of what NASCAR and supercars are going through at the moment um, and we we did a, a cost cutting segment on here which our fans really really liked by the feedback that we got um, and I see Paul uh, tire allocations they're abolishing finally abolishing um, supercars are sup yeah, yeah. Used so tire scene. You I rolled up a when you first come and drove, you had to run around on old tires, and <laughs> you're like, "What's going on here? This is just stupid." I was thinking about last night, I, my first time at, at uh, Surface Paradise. I mean, the first day I was dead last, and I was crying at home. I was like, "Oh my God, I've lost it. I'm no good." And you kept saying, oh, "Don't worry, mate. You'll get tires. You'll be yeah. fine." I'm like, "Are you sure?" You know, all night long I was crying and crying. Then you put tires on. I go, "Oh, that's a lot easier." <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I don't understand. So that, that. tire bank's going. Yeah. Next so, what, so explain what's happening with that, Paul. With yeah. So we. 
Your personnel cost to manage that used tyre bank was in a full-time job for one guy. Right. So the supercars are getting rid of that now. Turn up the track, get new tyres, go racing. Yeah, that's the way it should be. I mean, that's yeah. the cheapest part of the whole thing, really. I mean, yeah. So no, that's what exactly we referred to when we did our cost cutting yeah, segment. So that's that's a good one that the uh, supercars are and it'll better for the fans. There's a read straight away, yeah. practice one, everyone's on the same tire, you can work out who's fast, who's not. What's Sick going of reading on. quotes from drivers going, Yeah, I think we're all right, but I'm not sure because we had old tires and we're not sure whether we're there and it's going, well, Why are you interviewing this yeah, guy? Because it's just, good. Not, right. just a, Obviously they listen just to a waste, us, of, waste of paper. Yeah. Uh, fly by wire as well, that's something we, we spoke. But what what's this about? What why are they putting we said fly by wire because they should be using crate engines in, yeah. in the car. I reckon to putting, save money, putting but, an e throttle fly by wire on that eight eight trumpet throttle body is yeah. not going to save anyone any money. Where's the money saving? It's not. I reckon this is about parity. Well, they're going to use a fly by wire to. There's, that's the only reason you do it. So to to adapt that eight eight trumpet throttle body to fly by wire is, is a big job. Mm. The only reason you do it would be parity. But isn't the engine spec the last problem with parity with supercars? Because I thought the engines were very, very close. The well, body shape isn't going the guy, to the new Mustang. Obviously the guys the on the commission have got it through have, have shit engines or something because there's no reason that's going to save you money. That's got to be about parity. But also too, isn't it, because there isn't a throttle cable on a new car sold anywhere anymore, right? Yeah. They're mm. all yeah. fly-by-wire. So They're all fly-by-wire. Yeah. But if you go to a, a new spec crate engine that's already got fly-by-wire on it but to adapt our old engine to it mm. doesn't make sense is this the same old same old too little too little too late but just too little that one's like, not like, about saving money mate oh I'll, I'll, no way that's there's something else behind that i would just wish that yeah. i wish they'd get their heads <laughs> out the same with that selling the same fly-by-wire system to everybody that's probably well you've yeah, everyone's, everyone's got a different manifold yeah. so then you got to get two electric motors change your manifold, bolt them to the one you've got. It's not like you're bolting a new piece on, you've got to adapt what you've got. Why don't they go to a crate yeah. engine then? Well, they should. Redundancy? Yeah. Well, the TC, at the TCR round, I ran to Rick Kelly, who they're running Nissans at the moment, which are now obsolete. Right. Um, yeah. He's got to he's got change over next year. Well, it doesn't have to, but he's running out of engine parts with a Nissan, with it, running out of blocks, and, and, and so he said, look, it's probably our last year with them anyway, no matter what. So we're going to be forced into a change. If he goes to the Mustang, he has to buy whole new engines or lease engines. Yeah, Penske, aren't, Penske aren't going to supply 140 engines. 140 grand an engine. You know, Capital so, cost. That's yeah, crazy. so it's a massive cost. So he's saying, well, what do I do? To me, that's now's a changeover point. Now they start thinking about a crate engine, at least for him. So, rightio, if you want to go to a crate engine, as long as we can get the horsepower at there you go. You, you go Maybe you that's go why they're going e throttle to the old engines because if they, someone goes to a crate engine, at least they can equalise it with e throttle on the, on the older generation engines. That could be. And the, bring it back to the crate engine. You might have yeah. discovered the reason. Yeah. Well, that, it just makes logic. If, that's if he, the reason. If, I reckon. if he has to change it, and that's the way they look in the future, yeah. let let Kelly's I reckon you've Kelly Racing the, do it first. Unearth the gold there, mate. It's just someone goes through a no crate brainer. engine, and no then Pensig or Triple Eight have still got their their other engines. You can equalise that with e throttle and mm. get the same parity without having to do anything else to the motor. Because otherwise, they're investing in engines that in 2021, if they decide to change again, he's got to trash them again. There's another couple million down the drain. No, that's what it's about. Yeah. Plug the computer in. I said you, you've got too much power than him with the crate engine. Yeah. You're now at 93.5% throttle. Problem fixed. So it's parity and future parity. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's just, that's probably why they're going that way. Uh, staying on the supercar theme, Scott McLaughlin. There's been a lot of talk about Scott McLaughlin. You, you obviously heard yeah, of him yeah. over here. Been doing a little bit of winning. Fast. I like about a lot. Yeah. Um, he's he's got. Uh, she's not Canadian. American. Soon to be wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest of it. So uh, there's from, been a uh, lot of speculation that he, he wants to go to NASCAR. No, he said he wants to go. He wants to go. He wants to go. So Why, why wouldn't he? Yeah. He should. <laughs> He's with the right people yeah. as well, with the Penske organisation. Um, I'm sure they'd like to keep him here because... Well, they're, they're not going to let him go till they can find someone to do his job here for a start. What, so. what do you... Because you know, you know yourself, uh, after Marcus, I mean, Marcus was one of the most talented people from these shores that went over there, and how hard and tough he found it, especially on Ables. How do you reckon Scott would find it? Well, I, I think it's an easier time for him right now. I mean, look, Marcus went with a team that was a mid-pack team. And right. I mean, he was unbelievable on the road courses. Um, I think what makes it right now is two reasons. One, with Penske, it's one of the top two teams out there. 
So already he's ahead of the game. Yeah. Two is when Marcus went over there, you know, last year, this year is the first year that they have 500 horsepower engines on all the, the mile and a half tracks. Anything over a mile, 500 horsepower engines. So what they're running the, what 850 to 900. So, really? You know, Please. so yeah, on a mile and a half track, I mean, you were using the brakes. You know, you were lifting and braking. Yeah. You know, now in qualifying, they're flat out like a super speedway, just wide open. And the only tracks they're using the 750 horsepower engine are the road courses and the mile or less. So I think that'll make it easier for him. Because okay. you go to the bulk of the tracks are a mile and a half. I, I think for sure he's going to be competitive on the road courses like Ambrose yep. was. Um, plate racing, he's going to have a great car. You're wide open. You have to learn the draft. That's something he could pick up. I mean, How long I think. I mean, I don't think it'll take him long. You know, with teammates like Joey Logano and Brad Keselowski, if he gets along great with them and they share the information, quick. You know, I mean, yeah. I. I finished fourth at Daytona in my, you know, third try. Yeah. And a lot of it's luck. A lot of it's how you had to have a good car, but it's just. You're a friendly it's, guy, too. It's, it's, everyone it's, probably it, looking it, after you. Well, I had, a good, I had a good thing because everyone I, loves I taught everyone how to road race. So yes, I, I right. gave them all my information oh, there, and then they opened the book when I, I went oval racing. Yeah. But so saying that, I think because of the lower horsepower engines, and if you tell mm -hmm. a guy it's wide open, I mean, he's going to go wide open. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's different when you have this 3,500-pound car trying to turn it into a corner that's, that's a sled compared to a V8 supercar at 208 miles an hour. Where do I lift? Yeah. Is it going to stick? Having the confidence. But it, if you look at a throttle trace now, which you never could look at before, so but now with the fuel injection, correction. you can yeah, look yeah. at their throttle trace and say, yeah, he's flat. Okay, I'm going to hold it flat. And so they've got, sure he's got a little bit of data. Yeah, he's got so a little, they got a little bit of data now. Nothing they got like throttle got, traces. But, but so, yeah. So timing will be right. I now. think the timing's right for him to do it. He's got the best team, and it's the easiest time to do it because of the lower horsepower engines. Now, you're the insider for NASCAR. We, we've talked about um, some comments that uh, Roger Penske has made about cutting as much as 80% out of a NASCAR budget by 2021. Yep. What's, your, what's your read what's on the, the ground over there? Of, of I think they are, I mean, and future and everything they're racing now is obsolete. Every right. part of the car, all the wheels, everything. And what Gone. they say mm -hmm. now is they're gonna be able to run on seven cars. You know, each team's gonna be allowed seven cars, but right yeah. now they have 15 okay. per cars. 15. Um, yeah. And, and I think the, the, the biggest thing, too, is what they're going to save on is employees. You know, there's going to be 2,500 fabricators yep. let go at the end of this year. Is that right? Know, because there's no more fabrication. You buy everything, you bolt the clip on, yep. you be very minimal Is it going to be carbon, carbon tub, you think? Uh, I don't think carbon, but it's going to be, you know, all spec stuff that they buy. Yeah. So you buy the chassis, complete, done. Yeah, you buy the chassis, and then, you know, the front clip and the rear clip are going to kind of bolt on like bolt the on trucks to, do, yep. which Robbie yep. Gordon started that, which yep. is a great idea. So it's more like an Indy car where you crash an end or you just change it, you yeah, put your yeah. road course Left clip with the on. center section, right. if you have a crash, just pull right. a new. Where now, I mean, a NASCAR team is constantly always building cars. They're just building cars, building yep. cars, and building, manipulating. They never stop. And manipulating and trying and, and you know, they have 15 or 16 cars per team and they might only run that car twice or three times. And what about engines? Because we're, we're reading stories about hybrid and to me, NASCAR with a hybrid, sure the rednecks would go nuts if they thought there was anything electric in a in a NASCAR. Is it? Is That'd that would be real? hard for me to believe that they would <laughs> yeah, do that. Yeah. Be hard for me it to believe. It said hybrid capability. They, no, don't, okay. they don't need it, you know. I, yeah. I don't think they need it, you know. Yep. They're talking about that in in the WeatherTech sports car series, and I think it'll happen. Okay. A hybrid, yeah, yeah. Okay. A, kind of a spec hybrid thing. Yep. But uh, NASCAR, I don't see that happening, you know. And and now the engines are, you know, because there's such low horsepower, they're pretty easy you know the cost and is coming reliable, down more reliable but but just to tell you you know like eight ten years ago a nascar a front running nascar team had a five million dollar budget and now they're 15 million dollars so far out okay it's, it's gone crazy job. Well, yeah. that, not to that extent, but that's that's the way supercars have gone here. Yeah. Unfortunately, the super the whole supercar thing. I mean, right. they've they've got to bring budgets back, uh, yeah. and and but it seems to me where NASCAR are reacting to it, and going, this is what we got to do. Yeah, it, this is a big change, you know. To say everything you have is useless, but the teams that I've talked to, they're they're happy about it. You know, in the long run, it's going to be better. In the long run, it's going to save Maybe them money. Maybe that's what they need to do here, Paul. Maybe they need to bite the bullet and go. And, these things it's are big, obsolete. There's a big difference, mate. NASCAR's privately owned. Yep. One person 
that owned by a single family and they can still make the decision. Obviously they're consulting they the teams. They can, but they did consult the teams. Yeah. They all yeah. had to buy off on all the Rick Hendricks and the Penskys, you know, all the, once you all get, the big once teams. Once you get a consensus. They had to get the consensus. Yeah. 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 So they but they made the decision. Right. Well, yeah. they got to get it. They've got to get ownership back again. But but then... Well, Sean, they've got a bigger problem she, too because well, they, they own a lot of the tracks. So right. But, but you know, when I look at it and I go, is the racing any better than it was 15 years ago? No. no. It's no, not better. It's so too, too many people got too. Right. Everything's too good. Right. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. I mean, yeah. you know, this the dumb version of Boris. Like, I don't know it's pretty. Why at five million was it fine? Yeah. Why did it have to get? How did they, they let it get to that? But this yeah, is probably right. this is what something we've debated. The same with supercars. Is the racing any better now than it was back then when you're spending a quarter of no, what the cars are too good. Everyone's got the same. Everyone's got good stuff. You know, everyone's yeah. car's really, really good. I thought when I first came here, I mean, I've raced all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Anything with four wheels I've raced. And coming here, that was the most professional, most competitive road race series I've ever seen. I mean, the way these guys drove and yeah. how hard they drove. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it wasn't like America in, in the sports car series. If you touch a guy, you know, you get a fine or thing. Here, here the guys are like, you know, they're all eating lunch together. And they're like, ah, yeah, fucking you had me off. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. And then at night they're drinking together. I go, man, this is pretty cool. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, that's, and the horation was so hard. That's 10 years ago. Yeah, that was we, 10 years ago. Yeah. Not anymore? We've all retired. There's no yeah, one doing that anymore. That was good stuff. guys Maybe you've got to look backwards yeah. to go forward. You do. I think you're you right. Know, the, yeah. the, the end of the day. I mean, and he was saying about them taking ownership. Well, Sean Seema, who's the who's CEO of Supercars, yep. has come out saying he's adamant the championship is not readying itself for sale. Because at the moment it's owned by a, a private equity company who bought right. Supercars out. Yeah. But so... The, the teams don't, well, they own a portion of it, but not all of it. But they've got to get ownership back. So I don't know why you'd come out saying you, it's not for well, sale. Well, someone's asked the question. He's it, it is it. for sale, though. Yeah. You know how I put it in the well, car? I reckon it's not for sale till they do the next TV deal. In the car business, when I went in, I'm a simple guy. You know, I'm not a smart guy. And I'm a Fisher Price version on everything. I go, and they have all these reports, and these people doing this, and these people doing that. And I go, can't we just treat the customer right and sell them a car? And he'll yeah. buy more cars. Uh. And I think we need to do that. I think racing's gone that way. Everything's yeah. too complicated. Just make a good show, get good guys, and, and, and make it fun. And Entertain watch. people. Right. Entertain people. Watch it. That's it. Screw the engineers and all this crazy stuff they have. They have all these different things, and costs go way up. I mean, let's get back to basics and put mm -hmm. a good show on. Yeah. Right? It's it's interesting interesting and then when mm -hmm. you put the show on, then you become the household name. Yep. You know? It's an interesting part of it, isn't it? That's, that's, that's yeah. why I was really interested to get, because, I mean, is there any chance that the, that the car that NASCAR building would sit here, or it's still too remote? They should get the because old Because you've experienced yeah. both. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know so. why they need the new car. I mean, why do they need independent rear suspension? Is it going to make the racing any better? No, but no. they say for the long term, it's going to be way cheaper. Right, yeah. and that's yeah. why they're doing it. Are they doing it for manufacturer relevance? To They've already kind of done that now with the bodies. Have it's they? more just to... But nothing you know, like we've got. Instead of, instead of one team spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to build their own spindle, it's like, no, you buy that one. Yeah, right. Okay. have that one. Like, yeah. Are manufacturers interested in NASCAR still? Like, are they, is, it the, still, like, is it still, still on the radar? It's still manufacturer-driven. It is. You know, still manufacturer-driven okay. by the two. Yeah. Ford and Chevy. Toyota? And Toyota. Toyota, yeah. 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 Okay. Three. All right. Well, it's an inter interesting deal. Yeah. It's interesting to get your comments on it because, yeah. like I said, I think I think the parallels bar the money division is obviously a lot more in America. It's very going, it's been going along the same sort of path, but right. it just seems to me that NAS control. NASCAR have gone bang. This is what we're going to do now, and this is what needs to happen here. Right. Needs a final decision, someone to come down with the axe and go, "This is it, right? Well, we, we're gonna we're gonna sort it. No more drip feeding. You know, you just it's the only way that's gonna it's gonna work." New independent guy on the board at Supercars, John Borghetti. <laughs> yeah, XCO Virgin. XCO Virgin. He's oh. a new guy on Virgin. the board. They're independent um, on the board. So yep. supercars, maybe that's what it needs. Someone to just look at stuff that's not do a Tony Cochran and, and, and finally make whack. a decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as he makes it for the right reasons of racing, he knows commercially. Does he know enough racing? You got to get you got to get racing decisions made by racing people or, or racers. You know, to yeah, me, yeah. not by marketing people. So true, and we've said that all along. Um, we MotoGP. I just want to touch on that for a minute because Jack Miller. Jack Miller. Yeah, it looks at that one stage that, especially over the week, uh, last race weekend in uh, in Austria, that looks like he was going to be out of a ride. 
Yeah, and, and I can't work this out. I, I, well, Lorenzo's been sucking on the Honda. He's not even riding at the moment. Mm, he probably thought he'd get, get back to the Ducati. That was the rumour. But then the, the journalist over there asked Jack at the press conference, and uh, the way he answered it was pretty cool, I think. He, he said he had it signed. Um, he'd be having talks with the team. Yep. And then he threw, threw it into... Lorenzo a bit said he's holidaying the Maldives oh, or something. Yeah, which, <laughs> which he probably which was. <laughs> pretty good, but the way I handled it. But um, the thing I did like, he said, oh, I'll be racing somewhere here anyway. I think my results are good enough. So to he's going to stay in there. Yeah. So tell me one thing about it, it, it seems when you get to that level, I mean, do you know Jack Miller? You, you, have you, I, have you seen him? Yeah, you like find him? Yeah, guys yeah. are mad. He's oh, <laughs> yeah. totally crazy. So, mad. Uh, I mean, we, we both respect Moto yeah. GP riders as, as some of the bravest, unbelievable people that you'd ever seen. Good yeah. skids going on out there. Uh, there's plenty of skids going on. Jesus. They're burning through some tires, those BMWs. Uh, there is a BMW drive day <laughs> here going on, by the way, guys. Right in so front of us. This is, a, this is a live track, so um, you're hearing it. Um, do you, do you think it's just his, we, we've been talking about personalities and, and heroes and villains and that sort of thing. He's very mono, Jack, Jack Miller, you yeah. know, and, and he, he's sort of, oh, him and, um, and Crutchlow, you know, yeah. I regard them as really good hard-ass racers. Yeah. Um, but they both look like they've just rolled out of a pub, like they're a bit grunty looking and they're not the corporate. Do you think it's the corporate image? You know, especially riding for Italian teams with Ducati and that. Do you think it's a corporate image that's no. that sort of they're hitting a roadblock rather than just riding and talent? No, I don't think so. Manager is never so? worried about yeah. that. Well, I mean, I, I don't know. I just, I just look at it. And, I mean, he's not the best interviewer in the world, you know, when he interviews Jack, but I mean, he's hell of a ride. I'm not taking anything away from his riding ability. It's just, he just, I just wonder whether it's that and, and again, the Italian thing, whether uh, I just don't see why he hasn't, I reckon he should have got the factory Ducati ride, you know. I, well, he's, I think he's, he's better a strike, than Pichucci, maybe that's so. against him, but, but if he gets results, he'll get the ride. Again, he's fallen off again on the weekend. Australian, don't you remember Mick Doohan? He won everything. Yeah, he won everything. everything. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what I mean. Australians have got a good yeah. record as yeah. far yeah. as uh, But Jack's got to stay on the bike. He fall, falls off too yeah. much. Yeah, well, he got... Well, he's, he was third in, uh, he's third in the Czechoslovakia race and then he was in a podium position in Austria and threw, threw it down the road. Yeah. So, yeah, probably that hinders it a little bit. But hinders it'd be a shame a if he didn't, didn't get on a decent bike. He'd know. be on a decent bike, mate. You think so? Yeah, I certainly hope so because I think he's a, I think he's a bit of a talent, but um, it, and he seems to go a lot better when he's angry. Yeah, he's a Queenslander. He's from Townsville. Nothing wrong with that. That's great. Uh, Rightio. We now we've got a pretty cool grassroots section, so yep. it's, it's something we taped a little bit earlier. So um, we did a little bit of sideways action. So <laughs> there's a lot going on, uh, and and it's really cool. We had a lot of fun, and of course it's um, it's brought to you. Uh, by our friends at Greenfield Mowers. So Greenfield Mowers sponsor. Now remember, don't be a slave to your lawn. Make your lawn be a slave to you. Oh, you could be a NASCAR. You reckon? That's a good one, yeah. That's good. Yeah. I want a mower now. <laughs> you want a mower? There you go. I need enough grass. <laughs> there you go, work. Let's, let's check it out. Let's do some drifting around the Norwell Motorplex. Dude, um, the boys have brought down selection, selection of our uh, our equipment, and uh, Chris Sadler. Hey, going, Russ? <laughs> cool. It's one of, one of Sadler, one of your instructors. Yeah, yeah well, Chris actually does all the skid pan stuff and all the car control training, and uh, got into drifting. Uh -huh. um, you weren't drifting when you first started working here, were you? Not really. <laughs> nah, no. nah. Just sort of got into it from here. So what, what did you get into it, Chris? Like, what, why, why not that? I thought being a, being a circuit guy out here, teaching everyone how to go fast around left and right corners, you'd be into that. Yeah, uh, a bit of it was like affordable. Like it's being that it's not a timed event, that um, if you can half steer okay and your car set up well, then you can race against cars that are probably worth a lot more and, and a lot faster. Ah. You don't always win, but so you're backing yourself. You, can definitely, you can definitely have a crack, you know. Um, yeah. I'm lucky I get a lot of practice here, so. So you don't have to have a, so, the, so the whole reason is, I mean, you can be more competitive for less money rather than circuit racing. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty much. Yeah. And tell us about your rig. The build. So, What's the build of this car? Uh, it's just a 2007 VU Commodore Ute, pretty much. Uh, yeah. Good set of coilovers, good cage in it. Pretty stock 
uh, LS2 or L98 it is in, in the VE, 6 litre. Uh, good set of pipes and yeah, semi slicks on the front and road tyres on the rear. So what could you build it for if you went out and, and, and so someone's looking at this and they say, right, yeah, I want to go out and build one of them. Um, I reckon probably 20 grand, I'd say. You got 20 um, grand tied up in it? Yeah, about that. After all, I mean, I put pretty much most of the labour and stuff yeah. in it and painted it and everything. So, um, you know, if you were going to get someone to do it, probably a lot more than that. Um, but you could start Hard out with build. something. Yeah, mm. you, you could start out with something, you know. <laughs> You pretty can good. grab a grab a, a ride off and fix it and chuck a spool diff in it and you're pretty well good to go. And what's your running cost for the weekend? Um, it's normally about between two or three grand or so for the weekend, but I think I worked it out that it's about say six or seven grand for a year. Um, Just cheap yeah. enough. If you, if you <laughs> start out and, and tow truck drive and, and drive the car. <laughs> yeah. How many events are you going to? Uh, seven events I'm doing this year. Okay, good. Uh, I think maybe eight actually. Yeah. So. Um, Yes, it goes, mm. goes pretty good, and it's pretty reliable. Being and I'll a, see I'm sponsoring it too, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know you're sponsoring it? <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks for that. <laughs> it's cheap racing, though, isn't it? And that, that's what I like about it, and that's why it probably has got such a big following. I mean, you know, I mean, another one of your sponsored cars. Well, this car's got history. Do you know, do, what's the history of this one? This used to be one of our original supercar experience cars. Yeah? Yeah, one of the first cars we built. Would you pinch it? <laughs> oh, that's really nicely. <laughs> so you're here. Yep. You, you work. You work here and and uh, panel repair everything that Paul writes off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so same, years, same yeah. deal for you. Just affordable racing. Yeah, yeah. Like I go along to the track and help all the mates do it, and you get the bug, and you want to do it yourself. So just bought a car, and um, yeah, slowly, gradually build up a bit bigger, a bit bigger, and then yeah, to where I am now. Yeah, that's what I like about it, Paul. Like it's actually, grassroots. you know, yeah, grassroots. Kids can go out and, and instead of, and especially instead of tearing around the streets and acting like bloody hoons. Well, that's you know, why we need more tracks. They need more tracks, and you need more of this sort like of the stuff. The Gold Coast, we're meant to be the home of motorsport, and I've got the only track, but you can't even use it for this stuff because of the noise. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. Now, now we get serious, dude. Yeah, this is a bit of a weapon. Yeah, eh? yeah, we get serious there. Uh, this is Levi Clark. Hang Le on a minute, you'll love this sticker, Russ. What's that? Cams we are most for. <laughs> are these? This is actually sanctioned by cams. Yeah, it is. You're kidding me. Yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah. World time attack, yeah. 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 And uh, uh, level two's uh, low speed, so. Yeah. Yeah. So Levi, you're the you're the gun in all all this. So so the boys are telling me. Now tell us about. I want to know a bit more about and explain to everyone that's that's obviously looking at this. Um, is there different classes? Is there state championships, nationals? Give us a bit of a snapshot uh, of what it's all about, what drifting is. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there's definitely different classes. You've got um, there is state, and it basically goes from grassroots to level two, and then pro. Um, there's a few pro cars left in the series um, around, but so yeah. what's the difference between all that? Is it horsepower, type oh, of horse, car? Oh, horsepower setup, um, your tyres. Like we're allowed to run a two seven five in some of the classes that we run. Right. So there's a two seven five forty Nexon. Um, and then the grassroots is sort of restricted around a 2, 3, 5, 35. Oh, and, okay. same, and same, grass, so grassroots is restricted by horsepower as well? Not horsepower, no, no tire size. whatever horsepower, but the tire size. And oh, okay. So you don't need enough, much horsepower to turn the tires. Yeah. So. Oh, gotcha. If I yeah, put the 2, cool. three fives on here, <laughs> yeah. I can basically go up against any car that's in grassroots and they're going to be as quick as me because we're stuck on that size tire. So. Yeah, that's so you good, don't need the horsepower. Good format. Yeah. Yeah. What about championship wise? Is, is there a Nash, is there yeah, a yeah, Australian there's, championship? Um, there's high tech um, all stars that's running around Australia at the moment. It does right. most of the states. So that's actually coming up here uh, Friday, Saturday coming. So yep. um, yeah, we're going to enter that now that we've got the thing running again. And that, yeah, that will, we're restricted to a 265 in that right. series. Okay. So. And how many rounds in that? Uh, they're doing five rounds this year, I believe. Right. Um, okay. We're going to make three of them. Yep. Um, but yeah. And then what about state? Is, is there state? Yeah, just... state. There's um, like we're lucky. We've got um, Archfield out there, run by uh, Luke Fink. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's every thir uh, yeah, every Thursday night. Thing, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So you can go out there any Thursday <laughs> night. Yeah, every Thursday. Yeah. 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 Every Thursday. Cool. Yeah. Little go kart <laughs> track, and as long as you're same as here under noise restrictions, you can run anything rear wheel drive. Yeah. You know, build something for four grand. I got a little Beamer that I just chuck um, 15 inch tyres on, pump the tyres up to 70 psi, it's dead stock and yeah, send it out there. And off you go. And what would be the price range? I mean, what, what, what would you have invested? Because we've seen the boys here, they said around the, you know, 15, 20 K. What, what would you, uh, just, what could uh, you spend? Oh, unlimited, unlimited. You could go up to 500, like people are running full winters. Um, I've got a sequential box in here, one of the old V8 supercar boxes. Yep. Um, it's a turbo LS3, so there's probably 
30 in the engine bay, 20 on the gearbox. It'd be, yeah, it'd be, you got 150 grand yeah, car. Easy, yeah, yeah, yeah. easy, yeah. 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 But that's the good yeah. thing about it. It starts from, starts from 20 up to this. Yeah, you know, yeah so keep going. And whatever your level. And yeah. like I said, like I could run up against Matt in the same tyres and it'd be like level car. Basically. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so as soon as you put the smaller tyres on it, you lose all your drive. So anyone can be competitive. Right? Anyone can be competitive, <laughs> yeah. And like, that's the thing, like over in the States, they've, they've got like major teams, like they take 20, 30 people to the track. And on a good day, you know, it's it's a, an expression sport, like it's all judged, so you never know what can happen. Yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? That's good. Hey, that's now good. I want to show you something, Paul, that's, um, that I know that's been worked on in the background for a while. Right. And uh, Dave Gardner has been building this. Check, check this rig out. Um, I don't know whether we can claim it, Dave. Um, are we going to claim that this is the only range of drift ute in the world? It definitely is in Australia. Let's do it. Why not? I'll take it. <laughs> We're going to get it. So, so this is a brand new build. You've only just finished it. That's correct. Um, tell us a bit about it. It's got an, uh, so, LSA. Yeah, LSA, supercharged engine, um, Commodore gearbox, and then, yeah, totally re-engineered. Uh, obviously, it's normally meant to be a full drive, yeah. you know, going over rocks and stuff. So, yeah, dropped it right down and started from scratch and yeah as you said hasn't had a racetrack yet so <laughs> today's the first day because you've got a four by four car business so i should explain that's right, that that's why cars, that's correct. why you that's why you've picked this one that's to, right to do. so if we need some spare parts off the yard or whatever you know we can just grab it <laughs> it's pretty cool though isn't it like well it's probably what super it should have been <laughs> yeah exactly when look at it, exactly when you look at it i mean it's got a v8 in it i mean a lot of ford fans would be going sacrilege you got a gm engine in it but I mean, what? Why did you use a GM engine, not a Coyote? Just it fits better, and and power-wise, and and money, cost cost is basically it. Like yeah. LSA engine, you know. You so can the pick Coy one up, Coyote grand. was doing, yeah. Uh, yeah, Coyote engine too much, yeah. Too much, and the fitment of it because they're quite right. a big a bigger wider. engine in it, yeah. That's it, and these are factory, you know, anything factory that you can put in. Yeah, yeah. Less mucking around, yeah. Yeah, it's um, you're right. They imagine the super utes if they based it off of this, like a. Just, yeah, just and this, and this size cab, not a twin cab as well, because I reckon this is a nice size as well. Uh, nice and low with a V8. How do you reckon the crowd would, would have gone off, wouldn't they? Oh, well, they definitely would have followed it a bit more than what's going on there now. Yeah. But and what yeah. about cost wise? What about cost wise? It's a good right? looking, uh, yeah, it's right. good <laughs> around the 100k mark, I think. Yeah. Well, aren't they charge? It's about 120k for the current super isn't it? For a yeah. kit, once you go uh, By the time you build it, probably uh, you're close to 200, I reckon. Really? You build it, but yeah. So you could have built it cheaper with a V8 in it. Oh, definitely. And, and this would definitely. have been the spec, so. Yeah. Something like this, but yeah, it looks looks like something you'd want to watch go around, wouldn't it? I reckon so. Yeah. And it went well on the test? Yeah, go for it. Get out there and we're going to have a go. go? Yeah, can we, don't be out the keys. What do you reckon? <laughs>
That was pretty good, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah. Got, it's got a little a big underground following. When I say underground, you know, a, a very it's cult following. Very strong really. cult following the drifting scene. Yeah, Same especially. in America. America's yeah, pretty big. I missed big. it by 10 minutes, so I would have liked to have done that. Yeah. 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 But, but you know what it does it looks do? looks fun, though. It does engage younger people into motorsport. It does. Absolutely. So, yeah. And and, and we've got to drum it into people, don't we, Paul, about, you know, don't do dumb shit out on the roads. There's plenty of car clubs and sporting car clubs and drifting clubs. And if anyone's into drifting as well or wants to know about it, jump on the website. There's state and national uh, websites that if you want to do national championships or just in your own state, jump on there. Don't do it out on the road. Yeah, don't hurt Go to a track and, and, and you can do it in competition. Learn how, there's even drifting schools. I see there's one in Sydney as well where you can go and actually learn how to drift. So jump on the website, do your homework. Yeah, search it. And uh, don't research be your home. it. Don't want to see you drifting round and round about. Yeah, no hooting on the roads. Keep it on the track. <laughs> no happy you, ending you do that. No. No yeah, happy no. ending. Uh, Rightio, yeah, so we, Boris, we always um, take some comments from our from our fans okay and yeah. answer a few questions along the way too in our comment section as well so we might even throw throw a few at you because uh including this one because it's nascar orientated oh is it uh loving the show very refreshing approach to motorsport reporting have just watched the nascar road race at the Glen. yep do you think that the next gen c car should have some links to the nascar model the racing was tight the cars are robust very little telemetry and aero uh yeah. much aggressive passing opportunities Boris. True. I mean, it was a great race. I mean, there was two cars battling, you know, Martin Truex Jr. and, and Chase Elliott. It was, I was there all day watching. It was a fantastic race. So, I mean, that's what you need. You need competition like that to get people on the edge of their seats. So whether that's rules or drivers, whatever, they need yeah. to do it. Because that's what I've been talking about, taking all the aero, because aero has been creeping up on supercars over the years. There's a lot more aero from when yeah. you race yep. the cars. It's got to the point right. where you can't follow it some yeah. corners you need to take the arrow off then you yeah. need to be sliding around you need to be lifting because you're sliding more power than grip more power than grip yep yeah it's interesting I agree. Th thanks lachlan it's lachlan and shiki so thanks for your comment lachlan. good question it yeah. is a good question yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no we actually got a real good fan base that follow the show and a lot of respectful comments as well too not too much mm -hmm. bullying that goes on no, at we don't all, have any so, uh, which we don't encourage the bullies uh linda brown uh the thing with rivalries is the fans take it too far. The abuse that they cop is feral. That's where the issue is, but a good show, guys. So, so what Linda's saying is, uh, the trouble is when rivalries take place, the, the keyboard warriors come on and smash them up real big and take it over the top. So is that why they pull back on the... You know, people don't get involved in rivalries. I don't know. I've, I've been abused at the track probably more than I have at the keyboard join the club yeah. <laughs> i think that's good if you are because that means there's 50 percent of people are liking you yeah right so it's good fun it's all in fun yeah i don't mind it people are talking about the new generation oh drivers, when they see so it written they, they see, see it written, written they, 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 and they get all a bit worried take it to heart yeah yeah maybe we're probably a bit tougher when we what got else? abused you know so yeah and, and put up with it but maybe that's what, 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 what i said I don't think, don't accept criticism of someone you wouldn't take advice from yeah. Or don't, yeah. <laughs> Is that your mum? <laughs> that <your moment? laughs> That's your moment. Uh, Jason Smith, hi guys. Just wondering what your thoughts are on whether TCR and Formula Ford, who we are big fans of, yep. uh, should team up to support each other. Maybe even throw in some some drifting as another support category. Well, we've covered, you can't well, have drifting at the same event, unfortunately. Drifting runs it separately. But well, for, I do. For, I've seen an event with drifting. If you go to Long Beach yeah. Grand Prix, they'd have all the racing during the day, and once yeah. the racing stopped, they put the drifting on, and all the... Oh, really? There's a... There's, 50, 60,000 people leaving the, the track. Yeah. And then there's another whole fan base coming into the track at night. So you could do it. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, no, yeah, I never thought it. of that yeah. afterwards. Yeah. Uh, yep. so it, uh, they kind of shorten the track up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Yep. stadium drift in there. Yep. What a good and, idea. Uh, and they're pouring in at, at like when the road racing's finished, there's a whole other segment of people come to the track. And it's a younger audience. It is. See, at the moment, what they're doing here at Supercars events is putting on concerts and all this sort of thing. Maybe look at something like that. Especially stadium stadium got, trucks so and drifting. You, and yeah, if you've got a night race, yeah. when that night race is finished, it should be a drift event. The lights are there, the whole lot, you'll get a whole whole new people to the sport. It's a really good idea. Good, good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Good good question, Jason. Yep. Uh, Nicholas Britton, great show, guys. Question for the dude. How did he get into sprint cars and uh, how did he get one of the world's best Donny shots to drive for him during the world uh, of Outlaws? Oh, um, okay. Okay. Uh, well, also I mentioned to James McFadden for winning the Knoxville 360 Nationals. Yeah, J Mac won the 360 Nationals, which was fantastic, and uh, eighth in the 410 Nationals the week later. Wow, so that's pretty cool. It was really good for J Mac. So, so yeah, uh, what? Uh, well, first, I, Donnie doesn't. 
drive for me it's no, not no. my car you lend, you just lend him your facilities here at norwell yeah when he started ever. coming here and oh i got into sprint cars through todd wanless so todd wanless is a mate of mine when i stopped racing full time i went and had a drive of his car and and i uh, thought this is something i can do local track i can still get my rocks off and go racing and, and yeah. have a good time so that's what i did and that's where i first met donnie he was parked next to me i started talking to him and we ended up having a fair bit in common and now we're, we're pretty good mates and when he comes to Australia I just let him use all my shit so <laughs> in, in, in 34 years of racing I've only been scared once yeah and I went to Knoxville one time and they let me wave the green flag to a race oh, 410 <laughs> yeah. and I was scared shitless up there yeah. <laughs> those things <laughs> the power the sound I thought they were going to come up and just take me out it was unbelievable they're fast they? yeah. oh, especially fast. on the oh, big ovals so unbelievable like yeah, yeah. No, a lot of respect for that. Um, Ken, uh, Ken Thorburn, along the same sort of lines. Yep. Dude, just wondering if you still have a sprint car and would it be possible to do a comparison with the setup of a sprint car um, over a touring car? What are the differences? So, it might be a nice little segment. I've done that once before. I reckon if you look around on YouTube, there'll be a, a thing thing around there. Some we'll definitely do it. We'll for do sure. it. Yeah, we'll definitely do it. Because we're big once. fans of sprint cars. So we're, yeah. we're planning to do more with sprint cars once yeah. that season kicks off. Well, I want I want to go out to Archerfield with yeah. a sprint car. And we could probably hit up Andrew Shirley and borrow, borrow a fleet of his, yeah, or one of his, and go, and you've got to teach me. You've got to teach me. I've been out a few times in a sprint car, and I can't get my head around it. Coach you, you how you to got, go. You've got to give me some coaching. I reckon if we've got um, a radio in the car and yep. talk to you while you're driving, I could get you ripping around there pretty good. I just, I was out to sea with it. I, I, I can't get my head around it, probably. Mate, so. you can ride a jet ski, can't you? Yeah. What happens if you get off the throttle on a jet ski? Go Will it turn? Easier said than done. <laughs> <laughs> Easier said than done, especially when you get older. <laughs> hey, um, hi guys, my son turned eight and yeah. I'm a motorsport fan. I'm keen to get him into the sport. I've been thinking about go-karts but unsure and where to begin. I'm not sure of his age restriction or getting in the sport. Any help would be appreciated. Uh, located in Bendigo, uh, loud GSR. Um, well, he's got to be cars. Cars, cars. So cars first tip: go and yeah. find a good high cart track. Yep. And get going around there. Um, Which is always plenty of each day. Yeah. I just got my son in a go kart. It's yeah. great sport. There you I go. So he started ages. started yep. on the high tracks. Started on the higher tracks. And yep. got to the point where he wanted to. In the gas outdoor tracks. Yep. So uh, well, local cl cart classes club. for everything in go karting. Yeah. Well, if, if you look back at our earlier episodes as well, uh, I think it was episode five, yeah, four or five. We did a whole thing on karting. So look back at our previous episodes, and we did. We had the whole range out here, starting. I'm pretty sure they start from ten years old uh, for the junior kart. So have a look through that. No, it's younger than that. Mate. Well, yeah, Is it younger in, than in, that? in America, they're seven years six, old. Six, yeah. seven years old. Really? Yeah. Riding carts. Okay. Okay. Might Race. be wrong. So anyway, have, have a look at that episode. Yeah. Karting get Australia. On, get onto one of your local kart clubs yep. and get all the information. Club level. Definitely kart. I wouldn't recommend anything else bar carts to kick off with. No doubt. And Agreed. don't forget, don't forget to do dirt karting here in Australia too. There's yeah, a lot of dirt car dirt. clubs as well, which is really good fun as well. Nothing wrong with some dirt tracking. Um, some really good questions there. Thanks to everyone for um, sending them in. Um, now we've got our Castrol giveaway as well for our new YouTube subscribers. Um, now, we copped a little bit of flack, Paul, because some of our hardcore original fans, fans, original fans are right and said, well, what about us? But we had to realise too, we're trying to build up our following so we can keep the show on the road as well. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, we do apologise, but Paul's come up with a pretty good idea for that one. So, yeah, so we're going to give away uh, V8 Supercars driving experience. Yeah. On, um, so if you comment on our YouTube channel yep. why you should not win yet, it. Not yet, not yet. We're going to be coming up to do this. Yes, okay. that's what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah we're going to do oh, so, so we're going to put something. So Paul's going to donate a drive experience head out here as Norwell. So not for the next episode. So we're going to, we're right, going to we'll, drop it in somewhere. No, we'll do it now. Right? Yeah. We'll do it in the next episode. Why we'll, not? Don't we'll, be stingy, mate. No, we'll work out. <laughs> we'll work out the package, and then and then we'll do it on the next episode. We'll announce it on the next episode. So this is for our loyal ones that were okay. been there to start with. Well, that's what's going so up. You the, work out the okay. We'll work you out work the logistics out the mechanics of it. Of it but, yeah, yeah. But it's going up there. Okay, so the and you're going to take them. I'm going to take them. Yeah. Geez, you get me to work. <laughs> I can <take> them. <laughs> Not used to this whole work thing. Be fine, um, Castro will give away <laughs> a, a new YouTube winners. Right, uh, it is Renee Foster, Stuart Vaughan, Mick Teb, Jessica Gold, and James Abbott. Now all these are up on the screen uh, as oh, really? as we see. Yep. So um, make sure you check off that that's you. Um, next thing is you got to email in here to Norwell. So all the details will be up 
um, on the vision as you see it right now. So that's Alfreda at norwellmotorplex.com.au. You've got to email Alfreda with your postal address, a contact mobile number as well, please, and your shirt size as well, small, medium, or large. Put those details in, email in, and we're gonna fire those signed package out to you. Be, be signed by myself and the dude, and uh, we'll get them out to you. Thanks um, for everyone that uh, subscribes. Yeah, we picked up a lot of subscribers back on YouTube. Yeah, it helps. Which is, we need more exactly. subscribers and we can do more stuff. Yeah, for sure. Uh, that just about ties us up, guys. It's been a bloody good show. Boris, thank you very much yeah, very for good coming on. So, yeah. Sorry to make you work while you're on holidays. Uh, but it's just oh, talking. It's just talking. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been a really great insight and it's, it's just perfect that you come in at the right time. So when Paul said you were here, I said, man, that's Let's it. Get him on. you got you got to be on. Uh, but we've got a little segment, right, um, that's... Uh, we call Dude's Life Message. So think of Jerry Springer, right? You know, at the end of a Jerry Springer show, he always had the life message, right? I'm from America. So. doesn't mean everyone watches Jerry Springer. Oh, no, <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought, but you know. I you didn't marry my yeah, mother. Yeah, so. yeah. Right. My no. brother isn't pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> I have a brother. <laughs> okay. All right, okay. So uh, a Jerry Springer mate. So, uh, dude. Who's going to... Oh, life Boris. Message? Oh, Boris is going to do it. Yeah, Boris. message. Boris, right. Boris I'll give you my Jerry message. Springer live message then. Yeah. yeah, okay. He who dies with the most toys still dies. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> How true. How That's true. true. How true. Now, you've, got a, you've come up actually with a lot of slogans because you're involved with No Fear. Right. The clothing brand, I actually had a deal with No Fear back when I was racing. I yeah. reckon it was the best brand of stuff that had all the messages. Yeah, and early on, you know, 1990, when we started, we, we didn't have, even have a computer. Yep. We would sit in a room at the end of the day and drink beer and look at quote books and, and come up with, you know, all those shirts like that, you know. Yeah. The older I get, the faster I was. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good for us right now, right? <laughs> And all those kind we'll, of shirts we'll like that. We'll race for food. Yeah, yeah we'll race for food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, so it was a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's how you cool. came up with all those slogans. Yep. You actually came up with them yourself. Yep. The and, No Fear brand was fantastic. He who yeah. dies with the most toys still dies. That was mine. <laughs> that was yeah, your that one. Was <laughs> it's very good. Hey, uh, just, just quickly too, um, our friend uh, Andrew Shirley from Ozdeck as well, he's been touring around the States for the last month and a half. Um, he went over on the 12th of July and just got back. Uh, his last race was actually the Knoxville Nationals, the 10th of August. Uh, did 18 events over there. Um, 18 events in, in oh, a little, so he'll be little, sharp, little over a month. That's a super speed. fan. Yeah, yeah. That's, super uh, fan. that's good. I mean, um, AR Developments, who's a local Queensland uh, development company, yep. sponsored him to go over there. Just a big um, sprint car fan himself from AR and just said, let's go over there, bought a truck, and just toured around for the Yeah, month. and I think they plan to do that for a cool. few years, so. Oh, it, it just Good to have been. our Australian champion over exactly racing right. in America and flying the flag, so. For sure, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah, as Paul said, Andrew Shell won the Australian Championship in sprint cars this year, so to go over there, what an opportunity. He would an absolute loop ball. I haven't caught up with him yet, but I will, and I'll get you a bit of a debrief on that. Oh, he was racing, and, uh, he wasn't a yeah. fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cool. I thought he was a fan. No, 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 they, no they went over there, packed up, bought a truck. Yeah. Uh, I think they took the engines from here. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. Kenny Mack, Kenny a local Mack. engine builder that builds the sprint car engines up here actually in Queensland. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Went over there, they took their own engines, um, got chassis over there, bought a truck and just toured around. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. But how's that? 18, 18 races in four weeks. Well, that's uh, that, it'd be just, it, You can race every night if you yeah. want to chase it. How good's that? Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. what, that's what I like about America. It's just You can race anything, anywhere, <laughs> and as much as you want to. Uh, that's it, guys. We're out. Um, another show. Put the, put the rest. Uh, thanks again for Boris said to uh, coming in and uh, entertaining us. Very Dude, entertaining. See you next time round. Yeah, I'll be here. Bigger and better. We've got plenty going on. Plenty on. More trips. More on track stuff. Yeah, got you're a right, you're car right. test coming up. People should tune oh, in yes, for next week. Yes, we've got a really cool car test. This one will absolutely shock you. The car we're testing, literally, it will shock you. So make sure you check that one out. That'll be coming out in about a week's time. So. Uh, uh, and then we've got some supercar racing, some more TCR going on, so we've got plenty to cover on the next show. So make sure you come back, but at the moment, get out of here, guys. We'll see you next time.